TCS, one of the biggest IT companies, not just in India, but across the world. For years, parents and students have been treating it like the next best thing after a government job. Stable, secure, a job for life. But that illusion is now cracking. TCS has just laid off over 12,000 employees, shattering the belief that a CSC degree guarantees safety. If even TCS isn't safe anymore, is BTEC in Computer Science Engineering even worth it after four years? In this video, we'll uncover why TCS was considered as good as a government job, why that trust is fading, and whether choosing Computer Science Engineering today is a smart move or not. Let's rewind to the COVID era. The world has come to a halt. Projects collapsed, revenues dried up. Thousands lost their jobs overnight. Across industries, layoffs became the norm. People were terrified wondering who's next. But amidst all that chaos, TCS stood strong. Not a single employee was laid off. Not one. In fact, while others were firing, TCS went ahead and hired 40,000 freshers. That wasn't just a hiring move, it was a statement. We don't abandon our people. In fact, the legendary late Mr. Ratan Tata, ex-chairman of the Tata Group, once questioned companies that laid off employees during tough times. These are people who work for you. These are the people who have served you all their careers. So you send them out to live in the rain? That quote captured everything that people felt about TCS. It wasn't just an IT company. It stood for compassion. It stood for loyalty. It stood for trust. So much so that people would say, Bata for shoes and Tata for jobs. A simple line but one that carried generations of belief. So, for many, TCS wasn't just a job, it was a badge of honor, a promise of stability for the entire family. But now that image is beginning to crack. But why? How did this come to be? Why would a company that was once known for job security start laying off its own people? On social media forums, especially a lot of them who are big admirers of Ratan Tata say one thing. Things have changed after he's gone. After him, no one could carry this legacy forward. That the TCS values left with him. And maybe that's why things are falling apart. But is that really true? Or is there something bigger happening beneath the surface? Before jumping to conclusions, let's look at who is running the company today. K. Kriti Vasan was born in Trichy, Tamil Nadu. A mechanical engineer, he joined TCS in 1989 as an assistant systems engineer. 34 years later, in 2023, he became the CEO and MD of TCS. That's not just a headline. It's a living proof that TCS doesn't just offer jobs, it builds careers. A company where someone can join as an assistant engineer and rise all the way to the CEO. A real example of growth, loyalty and long-term stability. But today, this very person has to make a tough call to lay off 12,000 employees. So now, the question isn't just why, it's how that a company that was so fabled for loyalty has come to take this tough decision. Let's hear what Mr. Kritivasan had to say after making this call. He said, it's a difficult decision to make, but we have done it to build a stronger TCS. The company statement also adds, we understand that this is a challenging time for our colleagues likely to be affected. We thank them for their service and we will be making all efforts to provide appropriate benefits, outplacement, counselling and support as they transition to new opportunities. It shows care, it shows responsibility, but it still leaves a big question unanswered. Why were there layoffs in the first place? A few months ago, a major survey reported that Gen AI is set to boost India's IT productivity by 45%. So the obvious question arises, is AI to blame? With tools like GitHub Pilot, ChatGPT and automated testing, productivity has surged. Tasks that once needed five engineers might now take just two. So yes, it's natural to assume, did AI replace them? But according to Mr. Kriti Vasan, the answer is a categorical no. He clarified the layoffs are not linked to efficiency improvements from artificial intelligence implementation. This is not because AI gave us some 20% productivity gain. We are not doing that. These decisions are driven by skill mismatches. So what does exactly skill mismatch mean? And why is it affecting thousands of employees? Let's break it down. It's not like the thousands of employees who got laid off were bad at their jobs. It's just that their skills do not match what the company is looking for or what their clients are looking for right now. Imagine this. Let's say you are good at Java. 
but TCS is now shifting towards Python, cloud platforms and AI powered tools. To still have skills, but they don't fit the company's current tech stack or project needs. That's what they mean by skill mismatch. And here's the crucial detail. These layoffs are affecting the middle and senior level roles the most. Why? Because many of them have been trained on older systems and haven't reskilled fast enough or simply that the skills that they had don't have matching projects to deploy on anymore. So even with decades of experience, if your skills aren't aligned with what the market needs, you aren't billable anymore. And that's when companies start letting go. In short, it's not about how long you've been at the company. It's all about how relevant your skills are right now. That's why job security in tech isn't guaranteed anymore, not even for senior level roles. Brutal truth is the industry has changed and so have the expectations. TCS isn't competing with just other Indian IT companies anymore. It's up against lean startups and global tech giants, all moving fast, hiring smart and aligning with the new age demands. It's not about cost cutting, it's about relevance. And while AI isn't a direct cost, it is still shaping what in-demand skills look like today. So when the clients need a shift, the companies also need to realign or risk getting left behind altogether. So was the layoff decision right? From a human point of view, it hurts. From an emotional point of view, it just doesn't feel right. But from a company's point of view, it makes sense. You can't build a future-ready company with yesterday's skills. It's not about abandoning people, but it is adapting to survive. If job security was once all about being loyal, today it's all about being relevant. So is computer science engineering a risky bet? And the answer is this, it's not about joining VTech CSA, it's about not taking it seriously enough after joining college. So even if trusted companies like TCS aren't offering lifelong job security anymore, the question to be asked is, where does job security come from? It is not from your employer, it is from your skills. Yes, today, skill security is greater than employer security. And it is clear. The students who stay updated, who learn beyond the college syllabus, explore tools and build things, they are not just safe, they are future-proof. There are graduates who got laid off but came back stronger as DevOps engineers, data scientists or AI specialists. It's not because they waited, it's because they adapted. So the question is, what should you do if you opt for BTEC CSE? You can't limit learning just to textbooks. You can't depend on grades as indicator of your abilities. You need to start working just like a software engineer from day one. Not in your final year, not after placements, but right from your first day. Because this field moves fast and the people who thrive are the ones who never stop learning. So, how do you stay ahead? Start by learning how to learn. Not just for marks, but for solving real problems. That's what real engineers do. Get your hands dirty. Start building things. Build anything. What matters is that you're creating and not consuming. Look beyond the classrooms. Internships, open source projects, hackathons, and even global challenges like the GSOC. These aren't just for your resume. They'll teach you way more than any textbook will ever do. This way, you're not just earning a degree, you are actually building a career. And CSE is still worth it if you treat it as a launch pad, not as a shortcut. Because in today's world, the safest place isn't a company. It's about how you think, how you learn and how you grow. Because end of the day, it all comes down to the mindset. Just look at Kriti Vasan. He went from being an assistant engineer to a CEO. Not just because he stayed, but because he kept growing, adapting through every role, every challenge. That's the mindset today's world demands. Not one that chases job security, but one that creates it. So stay curious, stay relevant and keep building because that is your job security.